and at the end it ends on an on a note that just doesn't resolve the song and he was just so upset about it and he's like it has to resolve and we're like no it doesn't, it doesn't corporate have- rock corporate rock much <laughs> yeah This video is brought to you by Stand Up To Cancer. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local and not-so-local music and the people that make it, including my guests. And my guest today is classically trained singer and keyboardist for a melodic symphonic metal band based out of Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, That band is a DI Records artist. DI Records has been very good to me. Shout out to Dakota. Basically, DI Records is a label that likes what I do and has thrown me a ton of content. I really appreciate them, both in uh, reviews and interviews. So, thank you. Their latest single, Love Bomb, is out now. But stick around, because after this interview, we're going to be seeing their music video for Listen to Me. So, please, welcome to the channel, Amy Gould from Eden on Fire. Hi, Amy. Hi. Hi, Joshua. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Not a problem. Thanks for being had. <laughs> so, <laughs> So real quick, did I say Gould, right? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, you got it right. That's absolutely right. One for one, yes. Yeah, really, because a lot of people don't get that right. So they, they make you a precious <laughs> metal, yes. Trust me, I understand. Um, so before we get into anything, if you want to be like Amy and you want to be featured on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address down in the description or click the Room 6 link, for, uh, the social media link, and that'll tell you all the places I'm at online, what I'm up to, and ways you can support the channel should you so desire. You can even get some merch at room6.shop. Hey. And also while you're down there, don't forget to hit those social media links for Eden on Fire so you can follow them, buy their merch, check them out live, and all those good things. Um, also, I mentioned that their latest single is Love Bomb. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell because I'll be doing a review of that here in a few days, and I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Now then, to you. I have a couple questions that I ask of all my prey, usual interview questions, and then I also have some things that are on a more personal nature, and I'm going to give you something I never give anybody. I'm going to give you a choice. Okay. You want a you question, or do you want a, 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 a room six question? Oh, geez. Um, well, give me a room six question first. All right. I'll crack it open easy. All right. All right. So. You OG Room Sixers will know this question is coming, but I find I, I always get a different answer. It's very, very interesting. I want to know, let's talk about your earliest musical influence. And by that, I mean, what is that moment you remember going, I want to do that? Um, it probably was um, listening to Pat Benatar. Um, growing up, um, she really was somebody that I idolized. Um, you know, and I remember, you know, the days of MTV and watching the videos and, you know, with the hairbrush in the mirror, um, I was doing that, you know, I was, had my own little stage in my room. (laughs) Um, and I just, I had, I always was bitten by the performance bug. Um, when I was younger, even before the rock scene, um, hit me, I was performing in all sorts of things, you know, in school. So, um, and I found my love of the stage and my love of performing. You know, I'm sort of a, a stage lover, stage whore, if you will. <laughs> I love I love to perform. So, um, and I found my niche in singing um, and music in general. So I was pretty young. I was probably in like sixth grade, I wanna say, when I probably did my first solo and, um, after that, I was done. I was like, I want to do this all the time. I want to stand up in front of everybody and sing. So that that kind of got me started. And then I started getting, you know, really into the rock stuff. Um, and I was like, yeah, I want to be Pat Benatar. So she was really my early influence in that in that world. Right on. I'm also guilty of being a stage horror. And, and I also know that that, that that is an addictive drug, that, that applause and that that, yeah. that feeling of like, they like you like me you really like me and i also am old <laughs> enough to remember you see kids there used to be a time where mtv and vh1 had music videos and uh i i also yes i, I never sang to a hairbrush but i my early singing style when i started writing my own music and thinking i could do this was definitely a combination of eddie vetter 
and James Hetfield. Like mm-hmm. the enunciation of James Hetfield and the, the passion and the, the just ooziness of Eddie Vedder. Right. Um, and, cool. and, um, and I think there was maybe a little bit of um, Kenny Rogers thrown in there just, <laughs> just, to, just to mix it up a little. And I grew yeah. up listening to, to all that. Um, yeah. Right on. So from there, we're going to do a you question. Okay. Like, ding. I should have like a little bing pop up. Yeah. Right. All right. So from solo songs like Lay Your Worries to band centric songs like Love Bomb, you're yeah. a versatile songwriter. Is there a different songwriting process for each? Um, so it, it's an interesting uh, journey on how all that, that came to be. Um, not really. It all sort of just comes to me. And, and my songs are really centered about what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking at the time. My songs are all really written about emotional states. Um, so Layer Worries actually was written um, during the pandemic. Um, it was the first song I had written in close to 20 years. Um, I had been in a really shitty relationship, um, marriage that took me away from the music scene for a lot of years. Um, I just kind of lost who I was for all that time. Um, I have a son who, um, was in that relationship with me and, um, he and I got out of it. Thankfully, um, it was an abusive situation. So, um, when we got out of it, we were starting to just sort of get back into our own. And I wrote that for him. So that song, Lay Your Worries is actually a song I wrote for him. Um, trying to kind of just, it was like a cathartic experience for me. I sat down at the piano for the first time. I had sat down at the piano, you know, over the course of 20 years and tried to play and I would play other people's stuff, but nothing would come to me. And then suddenly when I got out of all that, I had everything. It just all came flooding back to me. I really, it was just like this healing process for me. So that's how it all started um, after that song. And then they all started coming flooding to me. So it was really that I credit that song with just opening the floodgates to all the music that has been written since then. So um, as far as how my process works, it's pretty much the same. Like something upsets me or something gets me going. It's usually something very emotional. Um, I will start to think of either lyrics or I'll sit at the piano um, and I'm learning to play guitar. So now I'm picking up things on guitar um, and I'll come up with a riff or something on the piano and it'll just start to come to me. I don't know how to explain it completely, but that's sort of how it happens. Right on. So every Eden on fire song, it starts with you basically sitting at the piano or or plucking the guitar. Um, For the most part. Yeah. Um, We have a couple that our guitar player, Rick, has come up with riffs and brought to the table. Um, and we've kind of worked around with those. I've already had lyrics made. There's been times where I've written lyrics and I didn't really have anything put to them or I had something that I put to them that I really just didn't like that much that I was like, you know what? I really don't like what I did with this, but I like these lyrics. So we've taken those and reused them for stuff that he's done. But most of this stuff is usually my framework. And then we bring it to the together and then we rework it and and it does get really reworked it becomes a collaboration but um i've written like like so for example love bomb it it's kind of funny because i sat at the piano to write that where there's absolutely no piano in this song and there never was in the intention of having piano in that song but that's how i came up with it so the structure of that song I came up with sitting at the piano with the lyrics. So, and then I brought it to rehearsal and said, okay, there's not going to be piano in this. Hear it out though. (laughs) This is what I want it to sound like. And it needs to be heavier and it needs to have this syncopation in it. And they all looked at me like, you crazy, you crazy bitch. What are you making us do? (laughs) But we did it. I totally get that. That, whoops, sorry. That acoustic there behind the microphone stands and the, the, the video camera stuff, that acoustic, I call Bessie. Every every song, regardless of the genre, I've done indie rock and I've done just straight acoustic rock. Every song has been written on that, whether there was keyboard or whether there was whatever involved. Because for me, the process is easier with with uh, guitar chords than with piano. Right. The funny thing about that is I can sight read piano, but I can't really sight read guitar. So I don't know <laughs> why one is easier than the other. But um, right on. So from there, mm, room six question. Okay. Now you've been doing music for a while, mm-hmm. for, for for a minute, um, and how long has Eden on Fire been a thing? And 
were you there from the beginning or did you come along after it had started? So I started the band. Um, so this is my baby. Um, we have not been together that long. And so things have really taken off for us rather quickly. Um, we started in 2021. Um, and wait, yeah, 2021 was when we got together. Um, 2022 was our first show. So we're really cooking. <laughs> we're pretty happy with how fast things are moving. I mean, it's moving really quickly, but yeah. So 2021, the band was formed. Um, uh, the, it was the, the three of us, um, our bass player, Scott Haggerty, myself and, um, uh, Michael Calabrese, um, were founding members. And then, um, Rick Knapp, our guitar player came along a little bit later. We went through a couple different guitar players at the beginning, but, um, this has been the core and this is the, this is the, um, definitely the formula that's working. So. Awesome. Um, the reason I asked that is that leads to my next question. What's your favorite show memory performing with Eden on fire or solo? Um, and, I, and when I say that, I don't necessarily mean the best show memory. I mean, the one you pull out at a party, like, Oh my God, this one time. And it, it could be where you checked off a bunch of rock star wish list things or things went way off the rails. Space player went to jail, you know, the, whatever <laughs> what do you got what do you got that that is just like this this one time so i well i have a good story from a long long time ago but um that does had nothing to do with eating on fire but i have um for eating on fire i have a i have a funny story um that wasn't it wasn't a great show we had this train wreck of a show that we did um it was a summer festival but it ended up not really being a festival that it, it was supposed to have like five or six bands several of them dropped out and ended up just being um four bands in the end um and uh it started late they were charging way too much money for people to come to it and um they didn't have anybody there to run sound um it was like it started like three or four hours late so people came and left i mean it was just there was nobody there I, it was just a complete train wreck i mean we just but we laugh about it now and one of the beautiful things about it is when we were it was our first summer of um playing out it, locally here and um we made some fabulous friends with other bands so it was that was the beauty of it we had we had a good time with the other bands just laughing about the train wreck that we were all participating in <laughs> so it, you know on the one hand it was like a mess we're like why are we here but on the other hand we, we just had a really good time because what else were you going to do and we made good friends with some of the other bands so that was it, fun there's no misery like shared misery right exactly so that's a really good memory um uh, and then i have a funny memory from many many years ago when i was younger before i met the ex that took me away from music i i was actually um in rock bands and actually metal bands in um the philadelphia region um and uh we were playing out at a club one night and it was one of those deals where it was, it was a rock club um where they would have five different bands lined up for the night you know and there'd be a headliner we were not a headliner we were an opening act and um back in those days there wasn't a lot of female fronted metal um so i was almost always the only one in fact i never remember running into any other bands back in those days um but they would always be like oh are you here with your boyfriend and i'm like no i'm the front person you know but anyway so we uh opened up and I had these really cool jeans that I thought they were cool back then, you know, it was like the nineties and I thought it was really cool. And they looked like chaps because they had like the <laughs> fake leather on them. And they were, you know, back then they were cool. And, I remember um, those. I remember yeah, those. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, after I performed or, um, yeah, I think it was after, our, after our, it was either before or after we went on, I can't remember, but I already had them on, um, the singer for the band that was going on after us approached me and asked me to borrow my pants because his zipper broke in his. So that night, um, people got to see both front people wear the same pants. That's awesome. <laughs> I guess we know who wears the pants in the relationship, right? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I thought that was great. He was he was pretty thin, so he could fit into them. But yeah, I, I was going to say. Was I was pretty, I was pretty little back in those days. Weren't we all? Anyway. 
I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go down that, that particular rabbit hole. I probably won't fit. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So from there, I wanted to ask kind of a weird question. Actually, before okay. that, some of you may have noticed I've been drinking my Room 6 whiskey. Ting. Merch. Merch, merch, merch. But I also, in order to help me make, you know, videos and, and do what I can to support local scenes all over the world, I got to ask you for a favor. Okay. Not you. Them. Oh, okay. You're, you're doing me the favor. You're coming on the channel. <laughs> so thanks for the content. Hey. But no. here we're going to take a quick little break and hear a quick message from future Josh. All right? So, um... Booze break, and here's a message from me. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. Generally, I'm an easygoing guy with love for most people and things. But you know what I really hate? F***ing cancer. Like many of you, it's affected my family, too. And it really needs to go. In fact, there will be 5,200 people diagnosed with cancer today alone. That's why I'm partnering with Stand Up To Cancer. Stand Up To Cancer funds and develops the newest and most promising cancer treatments to help patients today. They dramatically accelerate the rate of new discoveries by connecting top scientists in unprecedented collaborations to create breakthroughs. Their innovations lead to better cancer prevention, diagnoses, and treatment, which means that we can help save lives now. They're committed to funding ambitious and robust research and awareness efforts focused on incorporating health equity in cancer care for the benefit of all patients facing cancer. The best part, 100% of your donations support Stand Up To Cancer and its collaborative cancer research programs. Just for watching this video, and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 10% off your first order when you sign up for email. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel and the cancer fight. Thanks to Stand Up For Cancer for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back! And if that sponsor spot interested you at all, please, please click the link down in the description. Go check it out. You'll save some money. I'll make some money. Win-win, baby. Um, and if you're just joining us, I know I've used this joke many, many times, but what are you doing jumping in the middle of a video? Seriously, though, we're talking to Amy Gould from Eden on Fire. We have an amazing music video for Listen to Me coming up after the interview. And uh, in a few days after this interview posts, I will be reviewing their latest single, Love Bomb. So... It's all eating on fire all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so a few more questions, and then we're going to get to that music video. Uh, you sang the national anthem at a gymnastics competition? <laughs> I did. I it's didn't like, even know that that was a thing at gymnastics competitions. Yeah. So um, they actually had a lot of different people doing it because they had to, for each day before they opened up the ceremonies, would do it. So um it was something that popped up on Facebook that they were looking for people. And I thought, Oh, how, what the heck, you know, I'll, I'll volunteer to do it. And, um, yeah, they asked me to do it. So it was kind of cool. Um, it happened here at the convention center here, um, Bayfront convention center down here, downtown. It's on the Bayfront here in Erie. Um, so that was, that was pretty cool. Right on. I also actually have gotten to sing the national anthem at, at a, a thing. Cool. Um, when I got my bachelor's degree, they said, Hey, in if you want to sing the national anthem at the ceremonies, um, then, you know, submit a, an audition. And apparently, nice. I, I, yeah, I got it. I got to sing in front of the mayor. And nice. It was cool. But, but the, right up front, a whole bunch of military in uniform. Oh, wow. So you're like, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't mess this up. <laughs> you know, fortunately, I make music. What's very your good. superpower? Yeah. Very anyway. Cool. Very yeah, cool. it was very, it was very cool. And, um, it, it it isn't like you know a record label artist or, or you know a person was there or whatever, but it was still cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So, it, but I didn't know gymnastics competitions had this. I don't know why. I don't know why they wouldn't have it. But the only gymnastics I ever watch is like the Olympics, where of course yeah. you, you, they don't have the 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 um, national anthem before you, uh, that. They have it like if you win. So. If you win, right, right, yeah, right. And I'm not okay. real familiar with them either. Um, but it was like a really big um, gymnastics thing that was like um, apparently like the biggest one in the country that happens. Um, um, I believe like it was the biggest one in 
Pennsylvania for sure, but I think on the East Coast. Maybe that's what it was. It was something big. It's something big that happens. And they're from all, they come from all over the mm-hmm. the country though. It wasn't just a Pennsylvania um, thing. There was people from all over the place, but it was, it was big because it was, um, I think like four days and um, there was competitions going on in every corner of that huge gymnasium that they had going on at the convention center. So it was, it was big. It was interesting. Right on. And it's different singing through that kind of system, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sure. I, I, mine was at um, the Orleans arena in, in Las Vegas, which biggest place I've ever sung for sure. Mm-hmm. And the most people I've ever sung to. And, and the whole time I'm like, I can hear everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I also did it. I am. I also sang the national anthem at a um, one of our um, county fairs here. It wasn't a county fair, but like a local fair. Um, it's like a really big fair that takes place here in our county um, a couple of years ago as well, too. And that was a whole nother experience, too, because then it was like, you know, you're up in the the podium thing, like, you know, up in the box. And it's like echo, 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 echo <laughs> you know, in the fair box. So that was interesting. Right on. My, the best part for me is my mother, who recently passed away, uh, got to be there. Um, and she she was a three hour drive. Uh, oh. So it was it was kind of a big deal. And um, at the time she was in her eighties and it was just like, I, she gets, she didn't know, nobody knew, nobody knew except uh, my wife, uh, my wife knew and my, my kid, yeah, my kid knew. So like nobody knew though, that I was doing this, that was there otherwise. And my, the whole time my mom's like, why is he on the stage instead of with the graduate with other students? Yeah. So that was cool. All right. But enough about me. (laughs) <laughs> so now you on stage right now you're singing with the band any plans to incorporate the guitar or or no oh, i'm sorry you do the keyboard too yeah so let's talk gear just a little bit okay. what are you rocking on stage so um right now i have a yamaha mx88 keyboard um that's basically all i'm playing up there instrumentally right now um it's it suits me well it's it's a fully weighted um digital basically piano slash keyboard so it does pretty much all the things but i'm a pianist or piano so at piano so i for me to like play the regular keyboards i just i can't feel it (laughs) i need those weighted keys so i struggle and lug this heavy heavy keyboard around with me but it's worth it so um for now that's what i'm doing however Um, I am learning to play guitar, which I've I've actually been playing acoustic guitar for years. Um, I'm not great at it, but um, I've dabbled for a lot of years, I should say. But I I bought an uh, electric guitar about a year ago, um, and I just got it um, kind of upgraded and reworked a little bit. I have some friends who do guitar work, and so they they made it look all pretty for me and um, actually did some repair work on it. And... uh, I'm actually going to play at least one song in the band, maybe a couple. Um, we're going to do a, a cover tune. We, we've thrown a couple cover tins, tunes in now and then just for like when we need some fillers um, and, uh, you know, like encores and things like that. But we're picking up a Hailstorm tune and it really needs a second guitar and Ooh. playing it on keyboards wasn't cutting it. So um, I've learned that. So I'm starting to play that with the band. And um, so if my guitar player said to me at rehearsal the other day, he's like, so now what are you playing? I'm like, um, he's like, well, aren't you going to play an Ian on fire song? And I'm like, um, <laughs> so I think I am going to pick up one of them. Um, one of them I actually wrote on guitar and then gave it to the guitar player. And I said, Hey, check out this song that I just wrote on guitar. I know I suck playing it, but you fix it and make it better. <laughs> And then we're going to do it. So he did. And he, you know, fancied it up a little bit, but I wrote the riff. So um, I figured, well, that's the one that makes the most sense because I wrote it. So I'll probably maybe do that potentially. We'll see how it goes. But I don't really want to be stuck behind a guitar either, because right now I'm stuck behind the keyboard an awful lot. And um, for the songs that I don't play keys in, I really like just having my microphone and being out there performing. So I don't want to be too restricted all the time. So that's that's the key you know first of all was that a pun <laughs> it should have been it should have been it wasn't but I, second I, of all you know there's a simple solution I'm for that i didn't know it 
Yeah, you know, there's a simple solution for that. It's called a keytar. Oh, I know. That's what everybody says. I can't, but I can't because you can't do piano work on a keytar. I actually, we were just at Sweetwater a couple weeks ago and they had them and I'm like, oh my God, can you imagine? But like, I can't do piano work on a keytar. You just can't. I mean, I could do chords and stuff, but yeah, I do a lot of piano work in our songs. So right on. Uh, so where does the name Eden on Fire come from? So I wish it was a really cool story. It's not. Um, we were at rehearsal and we're like, okay, we're going to play out soon. We need a name. Um, what are we doing here? So, you know, I was like, well, the Amy Project. And they were all like, yeah, no. <laughs> wow. I'm like, how about something with Amy in it? They're like, yeah, no. I'm like, all right. So, um we were just like kind of throwing things around and our drummer actually is like, you know, they have band name generators. So he's like messing around and he's throwing names. Out. No, you did not. Band gener Yeah. So like we're messing around with that, but honestly, that's not where, I mean, that, that came up with some ideas though, that started generating ideas for us. So um, I think, you know, Eden came up in some of those and, you know, fire probably came up in some of the other ones. And I don't remember who it was. I don't know if it was me or our drummer, put it together one of us did and because i think we were talking about eden burning or something like that and then somebody said how about eden on fire and we were all like "Ooh, i like it and i for me i was like i like it because eden is kind of like you know the garden of eden but also it could be a woman's name so i like that sort of feminine connotation and you know set that shit on fire <laughs> So it was like, cool. So like, and everybody agreed on it. it was like, wow. Okay. So that's, that's where it came to be. It definitely is, it is evocative as a, as a band name. Um, and it, I wouldn't, I would even say it's um, inspirational for new material almost. Cool. For you, Thank not you. me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'd be weird if I was writing anyway. Um, <laughs> so we got a couple more questions here and then we're going to see that music video for listen to me okay. and um don't forget hit those social media links down in the description so you can check more of eden on fire stuff out um any plans to hit the west coast anytime soon um we would love to um probably not in the real immediate future we're actually really trying to get out there and do a little bit more touring as I mentioned, we're, we're fairly new. Um, we've only been around for a couple of years, but um, we're starting to do a little bit of like smaller touring. Um, in fact, um, coming up in um, September, we're going to be heading out to the East Coast. We're gonna go back down, we're gonna go down to Virginia um, and kind of come make our way back up through Pennsylvania, head back. So um, we're trying to do a little bit of that. And then hopefully we're hoping soon that we'll be doing a little bit more of that. We're just really starting to, things are kind of picking up fast for us. So um, I'm hoping by the next time I will be talking to you, um, I will be like, Hey, I, I'm, I'm getting on a plane to LA. So <laughs> that would be great. Come to Vegas. Let me know. Let me know. All right. All right. All right. Um, what, what does this phrase mean to you? But it doesn't resolve. <laughs> so um that's funny that you have that that you know that um so our our our, our album is going to be called unresolved um we had um as i mentioned several guitar players prior to rick who came in and, and completed the band really um, I call it complete because he was the one that really fit and we're just a family now. Um, but we had a guitar player who just for all intents and purposes was just difficult. Um, he, in fact, the, the music video you're going to watch, listen to me. I, one of the things I remember him saying to me was like, this song's terrible. It, it, it has no hook. Um, the chorus sucks. And I'm like, dude, it's like, it's catchy. I'm sorry. I think it's catchy, but you know, whatever. And he just like fought us on everything. But, um, one of the things he used to complain about was that we didn't resolve every song. Like, um, we have one song, um, that we haven't released yet called parasite. And at the end it ends on an, 
on a note that just doesn't resolve the song. And he was just so upset about it. And he's like, it has to resolve. And we're like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't corporate have- rock, corporate rock much. <laughs> yeah. We're like, we're not resolving it. We're not, we're not. So that, that's how that came to be. And, and after that, we were inspired to name the album unresolved. So that's where that came from. <laughs> We're in the liner notes to be like dedicated to so and so. Yeah, yeah. He, he he quit the band before I could fire him, and um, he was about ready to be fired. And I, I'm like one of those people like I really give everybody a lot of chances, and he was pushing the buttons pretty hard. Um, but I was about to that point, and then he quit, and then he went and unfriended everybody on Facebook, and it was like, all right, whatever, dude. It was like one of those mixed blessings kind of things, you know. So, sorry, my. Oh, it's okay. I'm just falling over here. Anyway. Ah, uh, musicians. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Um. Okay. Last question. You made it. Yay. So, are you ready? This is a yes. room six question. And okay. You OG room sixers know what's coming. So. We're going to circle back to that earliest musical influence question. Okay. We're going to talk to little Amy, little you. And what I really, really, this is geared towards talking to new musicians, but you got a time machine. You're going back. You get to tell yourself one thing like, Hey kid, you're going to need to know about this. And you know, it, it could be advice. It could be a warning, whatever. What is one thing you wish you could tell yourself when you said, I want to do that. Um, Hmm. Don't date that one guy. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, if you're talking about my whole history, I got a lot of things I could tell myself. Um, but it, musically, yeah, um, in the yeah. music business, um, would probably be to stand your ground. Um, don't let anybody try to talk you out of what you're trying to do. Um, you know, um, I don't know that I I ever really let people too much do that to me, but... Um, this is the first band that I've ever brought my music to. I wrote lyrics for all the other bands that I was in, but I never taken my songs and said, here band, these are my, these are my songs. And I write good music apparently, (laughs) you know, and I was always afraid to do that. And I, I think I had tried maybe once and people kind of poo pooed me and I like, don't do that. Do stand your ground do your thing. Um, don't be afraid because look how long I waited to do that. So, and here we are, we have a great formula going now and our songs are doing well. I got signed for the first, I mean, I went all those years never getting this far and now we're using my songs and we're getting signed. So live and learn. I couldn't say it any better. So there you go. Words of wisdom from Amy Gould from Eden on Fire. Like I said, stick around. We're going to see Listen to Me, the music video. And um, yeah, thank you very much for coming on the channel. Thank you hey, for watching. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. No worries. Thank you for watching. Stick around. We're going to see that music video, and then we'll catch you in the outro. In the meantime, well, I'll temporarily say goodbye. See you in a bit. <laughs> see you in a few. the new substitute teacher for Mrs. Kuhn's summer school music class. Listen, Angel, we don't need a teacher in that room. Today, you are a glorified babysitter. The students, and I use that term loosely, are the dregs of society. The worst of the worst. They're going to eat you alive. It's Amy. And oh, I'm sure they're not that bad. Angel, you can't reach these kids. 
because they don't relate to you, me, or anyone. They're going to eat you alive. There's another box set up that you can just stand beside with the wall. You know where the music room is? Thank you. We don't care. Oh, but wait. It's going to be so exciting. We're going to learn about Bach and Beethoven. And if we get really feisty, a little bit of Rodgers and Hammerstein. Remember the time I said I didn't care? Yeah, that would be now. <laughs> <laughs> How many licks does it take to get to the interesting part of the class? <laughs> You missed it. But I just love that you don't care what people think. Now have a seat, please. I do love working with the hair and the way that it comes out of your nose. I hardly think insults are in order. I'm not insulting you. I'm just describing you. OK, this isn't off to a great start. Let me try something different with you. Oh, you've changed your mind. I can help you. What is it? What I've is hacked it? into your bank account, and you have a whopping three dollars and seventeen cents. You need it more than I do. It seems like your life is based off of regret management more than problem solving. <laughs>
tomorrow. What in the world happened here? Well, Angel, they ate alive. You were right. But Fallen Angel? They listened to. I want to thank Amy Gould from Eden on Fire for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and an awesome music video. Make sure you hit those social media links down below so you can learn more about them. And uh, yeah, like, share, subscribe, all those YouTube things. But in the meantime, remember to be amazing. And we'll see, oh, wait a minute. If you want to see more videos like this, click up here. If you want to subscribe, click over there, ring the bell. And if you want to hear my own music, which is definitely not symphonic metal, click over there. Remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, Amy. Bye.